The name Edith Cavill can be seen everywhere in the city of Norwich. But do people know who she actually was? Do you know a lot about Edith Cavill? No. Well done. So was she a volunteer or an actual nurse? She was a nurse. Yeah, a bit There's like... There's a statue of her. Across there. In the cathedral, in the square. What else I know, she was executed. So where, where was she from in Norfolk, do you know? Swordson. She was from Swordson. She lived in this village really till she was about 16 or 17 and then she went away and was only here on holidays after that. But she was a very important figure in the World War I history of England and for Norfolk she was very, very important. During the war, many English and French soldiers were wounded and left behind as the German lines advanced. Edith Cavill hit up to 200 of these soldiers in her clinic helping them to get out of German-occupied Belgium and back to their own country. While Edith was doing her duty as a nurse, she was arrested by the Germans and put on trial for treason. The prosecutor in the case said, I want nine of these people to be executed. The judges decided to have five of them executed. And actually on the day of the 12th of October 1915, only Edith and one Belgian patriot called Philippe Boek were shot at the Tio National in uh, Brussels. We're in the parish church of the parish of Swardston in Norfolk, and this is the home church of Edith Cavill. Well, her father was the vicar here. He was the priest in charge of the church. They would always be in here on a Sunday with him. So she would have known this place and loved it. Uh, and basically would be here many, many times in her life. Many medical facilities have honoured Edith by naming buildings after her, including the Nursing and Sciences Campus of the University of East Anglia. I don't think that many modern healthcare students do know who she is and what she's significant for. Yeah, I think she's a very positive role model, not only for nurses, but everybody. I think, you know, if you can have that sort of outlook, you know, irregardless of religion or belief or anything like that, and, you know, treat other people as you'd want to be treated yourself. I know that she was a nurse in the First World War and she was executed for caring for both, say, Allied and Axis troops. I don't think perhaps any other person would be able to do that. I mean, you aspire as, as a nurse, you try to look after all people, look after people all equally. She's very short, she was only five foot three, and uh, she had a quite a severe face, you know, she was a very serious woman. Um, when you're in charge of a nursing school and working with doctors and disciplining students and things, you have to be serious. But underneath, someone wrote that once you saw her smile, you would just never forget it. The authorities offered the family the option of her being buried in Westminster Abbey, along with English kings and queens. Uh, but they said, no, we would like to have her in Norwich. And it was decided to have her in the cathedral rather than here by her parents' grave in Swardston. She's, she's remembered for a particularly famous quote, which she actually said to the English chaplain who visited her a few hours before she died. And she said to him, I've realized standing as I do in the light of God and eternity, I'm going to die tomorrow morning. As I stand here, I have realized that patriotism is not enough. I must have no hatred or bitterness towards anyone. Now that is a very fundamental thing to be saying when you're about to be shot. She mustn't have hatred or bitterness to the Germans for shooting her. She mustn't have hatred or bitterness to the British for not having tried to rescue her. She mustn't have hatred or bitterness towards anyone.